breakdown service. Can you come immediately? I'm at the corner of Church Road and Cuckoo Lane. sister's baby for walkies if I'd known this was going to happen. What a good idea of Harold's, a complete nursery service. Yes, human babies can catch no illnesses from wee ghosts. Must be very difficult without Mr Mumford and Mr Davenport to help. Where are they, anyway? On an extended tour, haunting stately homes. They are a great success, playing twice nightly to packed houses. Oh! They say some of those stately homes have their own wildlife safari parks. Yes, indeed. Master Mumford sometimes goes big game haunting. Oh. <laughs> oh, shh. Fortunately, the Scots ghost Hazel the Mackwitch is on hand. Oh, she is at this moment taking the babies for some fresh air. I think that's enough fresh air for today, my bonnie wee bairnies. Back to nursery. My baby's on the cloud top. If the cloud rains, I'll tell it to stop. I'm glad you said spooks are in perfect health. If she was ill, you'd have to send for a witch doctor. <laughs> <laughs> Does your baby drive you potty? Don't be caught napping. Send for rent to Manny. What blithering idiot thought up yon rubbish? My husband. Oh, what clever slogans. I thought it was Mr Claypool. Oh, I think she's run out of milk. Wheel her over to the milk pump. I know you will be pleased with our product. rent to go dairy milk comes straight from the other world. <laughs> oh, shh. With jokes like that, can you wonder he was a failure as a medieval jester? <laughs> Which grade, madam? Uh, four star. Fill her up. Certainly. Uh, perhaps we can interest your sister in our Rent-A-Ghost daily maintenance service to keep her baby on the road and guarantee miles and miles of trouble-free pram riding. Then, for a reasonable price, we will top up the milk level, check the wind pressure and change the nappy every five miles. Uh, listen, you bird brain sprite. After that fiasco with Dobbin last year, I wouldn't even trust you to change your mind. Dobbin? Oh, it was a mere pantomime horseskin. But last Christmas, I used my special magic powers to bring it to life. Not only did he bring it to life, it became very affectionate. Stupid thing, so fond of Harold and me, it won't leave us alone. He's tried for months to change the spell, but it just won't work. I will summon the pantomime horse from your house, and I will break the spell. Oh! Oh! <laughs> oh! oh! Henceforth, you will lose your magic existence and return to being a lifeless pantomime skin. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Ah, oh, well, nobody's perfect. Oh, get away from me, you cloth-eared cart horse. He won't even let Harold and me leave the house without it. All the neighbours stare at it when it follows us down the street. Can't you use your magic powers to disguise it so that the people don't notice it? Eureka! There's nobody about, Ethel, but Mrs Perkins is looking through her curtains. I can't feel it. That idiot clay pole, fear not, he said. No one shall notice your horse, for I shall disguise it. Well, I suppose we better take it for its walk, is. Otherwise, it'll have another tantrum and kick the door down. Come along, Dobby. Oh, 
I'll bet the neighbors think we're as nutty as a bar of chocolate. Sit. Well, I suppose we could tell them it's all Mr. Claypole's fault. No way. We're respectable people. I don't want my neighbors to know anything about those horrible ghosts. Well, let I'm dreading giving you your driving lesson today. <laughs> That's a good boy. Yeah. Oh, come on, come on. That's a good boy. Yes, good boy, good boy. <laughs> oh, young oh, baby's clothes are all crumpled and twisted. The poor wee lamb needs a complete change of clothing. I shall see to it. No need for that, laddie. I'll use a witch's spell to change the baby's clothes. <laughs> What we need is a ghost who used to be a proper children's nurse, and I intend to see that we get one! the emergency stop. When I hit this bag and say stop, I want you to put your foot on the brake and pull up as soon as possible. Now you go back. Stop! Ow! 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 When I get my nose out of this snags. Ah! Oh! I want you to take the next turn in on the left. That's the way to the spookery. I know. I'm going to do something about your driving and about this rotten horse. I'll not agree to it. I realize it is part of my rent and any duties to act as a babysitter, but I draw the line at being a horse sitter. Listen, I'm your manager and you'll do as I say. I want you to take care of this tatty old nag. It's not our job to look after your wife. No. He's talking about the horse, you stupid spite. Oh. And we want you to take care of him for the rest of the day. Oh, very well. Here is Dickon Stanley. All right, Mr. Claypole, I've got another little job for you. Here, sit down, Ethel. Now, I want you to put a psychic spell on Ethel so that she copies whatever movement I make. What a strange request. Tis done. It works. Now, you get the idea, Ethel. Whenever we're in our car, you can learn the proper driving technique by copying me. But I shall be in control, so it will be safer. Right. Back to the car. One moment, Master Beaker. Yon Sprite and I have decided our baby-minding service cannot continue without an expert children's nurse. And where will you find this expert children's nurse, may I ask? We have sent a message up to the spirit world inviting applicants for employment with rent and any. Oh, no, you don't. Two spooks and one live pantomime horse is quite enough. Indeed. Well, if you do not allow us an extra ghost, we shall cancel the rent and nanny project and the driving lesson spell, and then where will you be? Why, you blackmailing it? Uh. All right, you can have your nurse in spook. <laughs> Mr. Claypole, I'm going to carry on with the driving lesson. I shall tell you, and I want you to cancel the spell. Come on, Ethel. Blackbridge! I can hear the astral lift. It must be the nurse. Dear sir, 
Monsieur and Madam, allow me to um, prevent myself. My name is Tamara Novak. My credentials. Thank you. The arm sprite is Timothy Claypool. Oh. And I am the witch Hazel. <laughs> Now, you understand we're wanting someone with professional experience in baby care. I am that one. Before I was a ghost, I was a nanny. A nanny ghost. <laughs> that joke came out of my head. <laughs> it made a wise choice. According to your credentials, you were a florist before becoming a nanny. Yes, that is true. I had a little shop with thousands of sweet-smelling flowers, but I was a failure. Why? Hay fever. Sneeze, sneeze, sneeze all day, every day. I thought that I would go bunk raving stockers. So I give it up and I become a nanny. Alas, how ironic that we should have prepared a bouquet of flowers to present to our first lady applicant. Oh, what beautiful chrysanthemums, but um, unfortunately. Uh, 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 <coughs> Ghosts didn't suffer from human complaints. Oh, oh. Whenever I sense even the presence of flowers, the memory is enough to make me. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh. Now, if all I think you'll agree, this is a brilliant idea. Now, we're going to practice the right turn. Watch my hand signals. All right, here we go. Oh, Ethel! Ethel! Ethel, will you... Oh, Ethel! All right, Ethel. You might as well get used to the driving seat. I'll step out and stretch my legs. Oh, for heaven's sake, sit down, Ethel. Oh. Have you see, what do I do? All right, check that the car is in neutral. Adjust the mirror. Put your foot on the clutch. And select first gear. Check the mirror. Nothing coming. Good. Release the handbrake. Now take your foot slowly off the clutch and press the accelerator gently. No, Ethel! Ethel! Oh, Ethel! 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 Ethel, come back! Oh, Ethel! 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 <laughs> Just what do you think you're playing at? Come on. Get up! Oh, let go of me, old dog! If you don't let go of me, I'll cause an accident! Oh. All right, Ethel, you can get out of the car now. PC Burrows, Warwick Junction. We've got a right nuttery, I better send a car to get him down the station. If you'll uh, just come along with me, please. What? Stand oh, 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 no, if no, I can explain it. Come on, no, you don't. until he gave it magic life. Stop! Naughty boy. 
You must stay here and not move. Oh! me of. What? Ghost riders in the sky. <laughs> <laughs> Arthur, the Mikas are in their sitting room. I can see them through the window. Yes, I've got an idea. Next time one of the Russians lose one of their spy satellites, I shall offer to put you into orbit. I don't understand that the Mikas have been home some time now, but their horse isn't home yet. You sound like a character in a Welsh cowboy film. <laughs> I've never seen this ridiculous horse you keep talking about. You'd have seen it if you'd been looking out of the window at 12 minutes past 10 this morning. They took it for a ride in their car. There's something very funny going on next door, and I don't intend to ignore it. I like to get to the bottom of things. Show her that hole at the end of the garden. Well, of course I want Mr. Claypole to cancel the spell, but it's only five minutes since I tried to get through. Oh, it's engaged again. Oh! It's not my fault. It's your fault we landed up at the police station. You had a blooming nerve asking that police driver to pick me up on the way there. Well, if I hadn't, we'd still be a half a mile apart. <coughs> Since we managed to convince them we're harmless, they even let me drive the car home. Oh, it's the Parkinses. Oh, well, they'll think we're loony doing all this copying business. I shall have to tell them about Rent a Ghost. You will do no such thing. Just don't move about too much and they won't notice. Well, I hope you don't mind. We let ourselves in as the door was open. I've returned the lawn, Morris, in the garden shed. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> oh, do sit down. Thank you. You're sitting on my lap, Harold, dear. Oh, I'm sorry, Ethel. I shall sit over here on the sofa. <laughs> Silly mistake to make. <laughs> You must forgive Ethel's crazy sense of humour. Someday she gets the urge to play practical jokes. And when she does, there's no stopping her. Whew. Well, well, keeping in good health, are you? And how's the horse? Oh. Would you like a cup of tea? Oh, oh no, 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 thank you. But do have yours, otherwise it'll get cold. Oh, thank you. I see by today's paper there's going to be another property boom. If you ever think of selling your house, <laughs> I hope you shall give me first refusal. Oh, I, I, I didn't know that house prices were going up again. Oh, yes, they're going up and up and up. Oh, oh, oh the mess! Oh, uh, never mind about clearing up. We shall do it later. <laughs> well, what did you do that for? Oh, Arthur, love, come on, we're not staying here a minute longer. Oh, Mrs. Perkins, please let me explain. Oh! oh. oh. Why ever did they behave like that? I mean, why did she knock the tray out of your hand and kick you? It's almost as if they were deliberately trying to frighten us. Why on earth should they do that? And did you notice how many times you asked about buying our house? That's the third time this month. Do you know, I read a book once about a man who tried to frighten his neighbours so that he could get their house cheap. No, no, no my dear Rose, there's a, there's a much simpler explanation. The Meekers are as, as loony as a sack full of March hares. <gasps> Oh, we were just phoning you, Mr. Claypole. We want you to cancel that copying spell sharpish. Oh, behold, it shall be done. Sharpish. <laughs> oh, heaven. <laughs> oh. And behold, here's another thing that shall be done sharpish. Take that moth-eaten mule back to the nursery. Oh, but I was returning Dobbin to you. He has become most troublesome. Well, that's your problem, Mr. Claypole. Ethel's going to spend the evening with her sister, and I want some peace and quiet for the rest of the day, right? Right. 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 Never Shh. mind the magic voice throwing. If I find Dobbin around here again, I shall sack whoever's responsible. <laughs> Rent a nanny? Hello, this is Mrs. Meeker. Oh, hello. My husband promised to come and pick me up from my sister's house, but so far he hasn't arrived. I've been ringing home for ages, but he can't even be bothered to answer the phone. Mayhap he is busy. And mayhap he's having a nap. You go and tell that lazy blighter to get the car out and come and pick me up at my sister's house. And I don't want him pretending he didn't get the message, so make sure you give it to him personally, face to face. Very well, Mr. Speaker. Good lady ghosts, I am going to deliver a message to Master Mika. Master Mika, I have an urgent message for you. I'm in the bath. You can tell me through the door. Oh, 
Oh, nay, you must come out. I have strict instructions to tell you personally, face to face. Oh, for Pete's sake. All right, I'm coming. message yet. Me? Then don't. The horse is loose in the goose, and if he comes out and sees the beastie, he'll sack me. Uh, All right, Mr. Capo, what's this urgent message you've got for me? Uh, it is raining. You got me out of the bath to tell me that. Well, uh, uh, yesterday you said your garden was not getting enough rain. And I thought you might be worried about your hollyhocks. There is a draught cutting round this door like a knife. The last thing I should be worried about is my hollyhocks. I'm away to the office oh. with the beastie. Now, you can give Mr. Beaker his wife's message now. Oh, I dare not. You must, or Mrs. Beaker will sack you. Go away! Oh, Master Meeker, please come out. Um, I have really got a most urgent message for you. Mr. Claypool, if you want to tell me it's raining again... Oh, no, please, nay, uh, I swear it, please, hurry! <laughs> to the office at Transporter again. Please don't give Mr. Meeker the message until I've recaptured the horse. Well, Mr. Claypole, what is it? Uh, um, uh, it has stopped raining. You half-witted twit. I'll teach you to play practical jokes on me. That will cost you a week's wages. The horse must be hiding somewhere. I can't find it. Thanks to you, I have lost a week's wages. Well, since you are so fond of pantomime creatures, let us see how you like being one yourself. to be a ghost today because I want you to deliver a message. Go to 30 Park Road and tell my husband I am fed up with waiting and I'm coming home now. I sense the presence very close. Mr. Mika? All right, now watch it. Ew, oh. Who are you and what are you doing on my land then? Um, allow me to introduce myself. I am Nanny Ghost Tamara. Oh, how did you do? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Important message for Look, you. I'm fed up with you, ghosts, and your important messages. I shall deal with you later. Oh, no! Wait, Give me wait. a stop oh. clutching, my God! Uh, what are you uh, doing? Uh, oh, I am so sorry, Mr. Oh, Mika. Surely there must be an explanation. Oh, you think so, do you? Well, what about that, then? At your party, be a smarty and hire Rent a ghost. If you want a fine climb the spooky heights with Rent a ghost, you can let our spirits move you and for fun play ghost men's luck. Because we begin to shock, we hope your knees will lock. That's rent a ghost. Let me say the most terrific, simple ghost. Not scientific, merely supernatural gooeys of the day. Heavy footsteps in your attic means a spectre telepathic is descending just to spirit you away. Hey! We are extraordinary fellas here at rent a ghost. To be another you we never come to. Rent a ghost. For a biography, we ghost right to. I'm not forgetting a ghost script An apparition quick from deep inside a crypt Ring, rent to ghost An apparition quick from deep inside a crypt Ring, rent to ghost 